Hello, this is Kathleen. Today I'll be making a documentary about my gymnast life. Um, I will be talking about how I felt when I was doing gymnastics. I will also be talking about the way I saw gymnastics through my own eyes. I will not put any other anybody else's opinion into this. This is only my point of view and that's all. Like I am not trying to make anybody feel bad about doing gymnastics or choosing to do gymnastics. This is just my experience with it. I do not do gymnastics anymore. I stopped one year and a half ago and um, if I liked it, I really did. I loved it. Uh, when I was, I started doing it at six years old and I was like the happiest child in the world. It was so much fun. Like you were allowed to do stuff you weren't usually be allowed to do when you were out with your parents. So to have that freedom to like do, um, do little rolls or jump from one place to another or just hang on the bars, it was just really nice. And um, yeah, it was a quite happy place for me at the start. My love for gymnastics kind of stopped when I started doing difficult element. Um, it was just, I didn't see it as fun anymore. I felt more like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that for you to actually compete later on, like level one, level two, and so on. So, I'll say maybe just when I started competing around eight or nine years old, that's when my love, actual love for gymnastics has stopped. But I still liked doing it after it. Like I said, I did start competing around eight, nine years old, and um, it was quite a weird competition because I don't know. It wasn't like loads of girls. It was like this actual normal training place where other girls from another town used to train, and then me and my group, and then probably another two other groups were like just all competing against each other and we did get medals at the end of it but it wasn't as big as it was when I was around like 12, 13 years old when you used to have like all these big buildings and like only the uh, beam or just the one beam or one bar, one floor and one vault. Like that you can see on the picture right here it's me trying to like do my hair, uh, make my hair tighter because I had this superstition where I thought if I had six clips in my hair and my hair was tight enough on my head, uh, my uh, routine would be amazing. So I always had to have those things in my hair because otherwise I would just feel like Oh no, today is going to be a bad day because I don't have what I usually do in my hair. Um, as the competition, uh, when um, this was probably my first competition, competing with a double tuck somersault, like Randolph Flake double tuck somersault. And um, I did it amazing while I was warming up before my actual floor routine and everyone was happy, everyone looked at me like oh my god this girl she's so small she can do this because it was quite hard you wouldn't see loads of 12, year, 12, 13 year olds doing this so people were quite amazed by what I used to do at my age and uh, as the my floor routine came on I started dancing and then when he went, when I went to do this first line of double double tuck, I fell right on my face. And because of that, I uh, injured my leg. But I kept going because I didn't feel it at the time. I didn't feel my leg being in pain. So I kept going with my routine. I finished it. And with that, I continued doing my whole competition as well. 
but my coach wasn't very happy with me. She really believed in me and she hoped that I would have done this routine perfectly. So throughout the competition she would look at me and try to make me like show that she's happy with what I've done. But deep down she really wished I did the, that double tuck in my floor routine. Um, then I had also the next day competition where I qualified for bars and beam but that night of my first competition I went back to the hotel with the girls we all started like chatting being like oh my god you've done this and you've done that we're just talking about our competition and how it went and our opinions about it and then all obviously talking about the other girls we met there and that we competed against and um, while we were doing that, my coaches knew that I needed to put eyes on my leg because the next day it would have been horrible for me to be beaten. But as the next day approached, again, I started getting ready and everything. My leg was all swoll swollen and you could actually see where my leg was uh, injured because it was just bruised all around. And it was really hard for me to like compete that day. On bars, it wasn't as hard because you would on I would only use my legs at the start when I had to jump on the bars, and then at the end when I had to land again my double tuck as an exit. So it was all right, but I did give the my coach and um, the judges a good scare because I pulled onto the bar and I nearly but my bumped my head into that bar. So it would have been a horrible exit for me to land. And then when B came on, again, I wasn't very warmed up by that time because there were like the other two floors involved on happening and I had to wait for my turn to go on beam as well. And then when I went on beam to do my routine, then you have to use your legs and hands to like balance on that beam, otherwise it was just easy to fall. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think I fell, but maybe I just did the ones. This, this happened like nine years ago. So, um, yeah, I just remember feeling really bad. Like all I could think of while doing my routine uh, was, oh my god, I'm gonna fall. My legs really hurt. I don't want to be here at all why am I doing this and I was just like having loads of negative thoughts which you shouldn't have that as an athlete you should always think of the better way for you to make your routine perfect but I was always the opposite when it came to stuff like that so this is why I am right now I'm not doing gymnastics anymore I moved away because I was picked out by the big people in the gymnastics industry in Romania. Uh, I was picked to be in a group where they would only focus on the girls that are really good at gymnastics. So it was me and then another five friends from the same team which was really good. It was like amazing for us because we knew each other and we knew what we were about. We grew together so it was like just having your sisters with you and then uh, when we got there we had another three girls from one town and another two from another town but they were both in different clubs like competing for different clubs but they knew each other because they used to like train in the same place and there were like 20 girls oh, 20 girls and three coaches and two of those coaches were the people that coached me since I was little. So again, over the moon about that. But at the same time, I really felt bad as the time would go past because my parents, anybody's parents was allowed to only come every month or every other month, depending on how good, you know, like each family was with the money and for them to like have time to travel and work and most of the time I do I did have my parents come every other month because they weren't like 
very stable with the money they needed there. And most of the time my dad would work. And I also had my sisters, which I missed really a lot. Uh, it was a nice not being around family, which is quite hard for a child to be like that. You know, like training from Monday to Saturday except Wednesday. You would uh, train for three hours and a half in the morning and then another three hours and a half in the afternoon. And it was just really hard at some points because I was like really judged by not just the coaches, I was just judged most of the time. Even girls used to like call me fat. Like I had a problem with my weight. Uh, and um, I just found it really hard. Like right now people can say, oh you weren't that skinny, like by looking at pictures of me and like videos. But for me doing gymnastics, that was fat. That was fat for a, a gymnast at that time. So uh, the problem, the main problem for me at gymnastics was weight. So it just wasn't really nice feeling at all to always be cold fast or just for you to look in the mirror and think that you're actually that fat when you weren't. But our coaches wanted us to be skinny to so when we go on beam or whatever, when we go and train, we can actually like keep ourselves on our feet and actually make all those elements easily without uh, feeling so like heavy every time. So meaning uh, they didn't want us to carry a, carry our weight so much. They wanted us to like fly and do all these elements really easily, because otherwise you would always get injured or always would make mistakes without even thinking that you were doing them. But you were doing them because like fat was a very big subject in gymnastics industry back then when I used to do it, especially in Romania. Uh, I'm not saying that it was a harsh thing, but at the same time for a child just to hear that they were fat, it was quite bad. Um, I remember this one time when I was away from my parents in this like new building, like the accommodation at the new building where we used to train, new town, new everything. Um, because of that, like us not being allowed to be too fat, we weren't allowed, mainly me, I wasn't allowed to eat loads. Like for example, my daily meal would be breakfast, I would be, I would be alright with, I would be allowed to eat all my food in the morning and then in the afternoon I would only maybe be allowed to like eat half of it depending on how uh, much the food was on my plate and how like fatty or heavy the food was I would only eat half of it and then for dinner I wasn't allowed to go at all in there uh, after training, we would usually just go straight to have dinner. But me, I used to train, get changed and everything. And then while the girls were walking to have their dinner, I would be walking back to the accommodation with my, one of the coaches and wait for the girls to bring me my yogurt or a fruit. Usually it was an apple. So that would be my dinner and like my daily meal of the day. Um, so obviously there, we weren't allowed any snacks or sweets in between those. Uh, so one, I used to be like best friends with this skinny girl, so she was classed as the skinny girl because she was the tallest and the skinniest of the whole group, and I was the uh, smallest in height, and then again the fattest out of the group. 
and I used to stay in a room with her, so it was me, her, and then another three girls. We were all like best mates, we were like fine, everyone got alright with each other, there was like no fights, maybe like once for a time, but that's just how it is. Um, but this skinny girl, she decided one day to jump the window and go to this shop we used to call mushroom because it was like shaped in a mushroom and we all like just gave it gave that the nickname of it uh so yeah so she decided one night to not go and eat and so one of the other girls in my room and obviously me just going back without having dinner uh, i went straight to have a shower while those two girls were like in uh, the room and they planned this to like jump out the window so the skinny girl jumped out the window and this other girl was just waiting in the room like uh, having eyes on her to make sure that nothing goes wrong so after I showered I came into the room and then I asked the girl where is the skinny girl and she's like I don't know she went to have a shower didn't she I'm like, no, because I just came out of it. So instantly I knew something was happening, but I didn't know at all what was happening. And um, a few minutes later, she started looking at the window. So I'm like, why well, do you keep staring at the window? Like, what's there? Is there something? And I instantly started like feeling all scared because I really thought something would happen. And in those moments, this girl, the skinny girl just started climbing the window from the outside so I couldn't see who it was then and I was like literally so scared of my life because I thought someone was coming to like kidnap us or something um, so yeah the skinny girl started like climbing the window and came through it and it's not just like an easy window it's like you just push and just walk in it's just like a little square that would go upwards so she used to like climb under it and come in. Uh, so I was so scared and so confused when I saw her coming inside the window. But I did not understand why she was doing that. And then I saw her with a bag full of biscuits and sweets in there. So I'm like, oh my god, she got a sweet. That's all I could, that's all I could think about. But at the same time, I was like, oh my god, what are you doing? Because I knew the coach would want. Uh, I knew the coaches, coaches would find out one way or another because they always do. Like, I don't know how, but everybody always finds out when you hide in something. And so, two weeks past. Uh, it's been two weeks after that event. It happened multiple times because she did ask me if I want to like jump out with her, and I said yes. I don't know why, because I really wanted sweets and I weren't, wasn't allowed to eat any sweets at the time at all. So I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? So I jumped with her probably two or three times, but she jumped every time. And then two weeks later, our coaches found out, or they thought something was happening. Uh, so one day, one of the coaches, like, slowly came came and asked for each girl to come. He would like call two or three girls at a time. And then later on, within an hour, the building, like, the accommodation just felt empty. And I started going from, the, from a room to another, asking where are the girls, why is it so empty, where's everybody? And then as, we, as I was walking around, my coach, I uh, called my name and asked for another two girls, three girls to come as well. So he called us and we started like walking after him and we went to our main coaches, our main coach, coach's room. And they sat for us in front of the bed, in front of the bed, in front of the TV. And we were just looking at the TV. And the skinny girl was like sat right next to me. And as soon as she saw the picture on the TV, she started like sliding, sliding her hand towards me to like get my attention. 
and well that was happening we had so if the coach is like start here, the one doing the TV each one behind him just like waiting. And then the female coach we had her sitting behind the bed, like behind us. And she's the coach saw the skinny girl like moving her hand. And when that happened, because the coach was so angry at us, she was like so offended by why we chose to do this. She slapped the skinny girl over the head. It wasn't that hard, but the skinny girl was really scared. And I think she told me that she actually uh, weaned herself a little bit, but she was really scared. And so we watched this video, and then the coaches asked us, do you know why is this here? What happened? Do you know anything about it? And we were all just like not saying anything, just looking at the coach and just like silent. And then after we didn't like, after we didn't answer him, we they took us and put us in the back of the room. In the back of that room, there was another little room down there, like a living room. So they closed the door. They opened the door, and we saw all the girls that were like missing in the accommodation, and. Um, I'm like, oh my god, there you are in my head, because I couldn't say that out loud. Like, there was tension in that room, so you couldn't say anything. So we all hid in there while the other coach went and brought the last few girls to watch the video. And again, they went through it all and everything. And next, the next week following, the coaches decided to punish us because of what we've done, because we all got fat and we used to jump the window to buy sweets. So instead of training, they used to make us do like workouts, like intense workouts the whole day, like the whole two sessions we had, like three hours and a half, so seven hours of the day, we only did intense workouts uh, for the whole week. So they would make us run on this, circuit and then uh, after that they would make us like do again some kind of circuit where they would put us in teams and then the girl would like run come back and the next one would run come back and so on and do that until like one um, one team would win and uh, after the, that it was like one of the events that happened, but that was like the biggest event, like bad event we've done while we were away. Another one was uh, we had to go to this big, so the group that used, the, we went to this place where the big group, I mean the group that used to train only for the Olympics. So obviously they would go to the competitions, but they were mainly focusing to go to the Olympics. So we went there, and while we were on the bus there, I think it was like around the four hour, five hour journey, and on the bus there, one of the coaches with the, was with us in the bus, and he we stopped at, uh, I think we stopped at Shell, I think. So they could fill up the bus and at the same time so we can have a break and eat. And while we were inside, our coach were like, yeah, you can buy some sweets. I think he was drunk at the time, so that's why he agreed. So we all took the opportunity on buying some sweets. From, I think I only brought one sweet because I knew I had the chocolate in my bag. Hid it as usual. And then uh, the other girls, uh, some of them brought two, three, depending on how they felt and how free they felt of buying it. Uh, and then we got to this place and obviously we couldn't train that day. So we waited until the next morning and every morning our coach would like wait for us to see how, how much we were while we were training. And um, all of us were fat, like everybody was fat. Uh, and uh, 
I think I was like over two kilograms and a hundred grams over the limit I was allowed to be. So we trained, and then again we had to do the intense workout at the end of the training because that's what we always do. And then after that, instead of going and no, we went. We had lunch, and then we went and had. Uh, we had like our little one hour break and then we went had our second training of the day and instead of going and having dinner they made us go and do circuits laps make as many laps as you were make as many laps as you were over the limit so I had to do 21 laps on that big circuit um, so that I think that took me another three hours to do so I've been training for seven hours and then I had to do another three hours of running and uh, we weren't allowed to go for dinner that day that night so our coaches just came and gave us like one fruit but I had that chocolate in my bag so I decided to eat it because why not because like I wasn't gonna I was stubborn at the time so I decided to eat my chocolate and then the next day came she waited us some girls um, some girls like burned all that fat off but me because I ate that chocolate and the fruit I didn't so I was like right at the same weight as I was the other day so again, training for seven hours and then skipping lunch and then I had to like redo all these laps again. Another three hours. And then as the third day came for her to like wait us again, I uh, burned off one kilogram and 200 grams off. So it was all right, it wasn't that bad. But she was again really upset with us. She was not happy with any of us while we were on that tree. Um, while I was doing my beam in twen while I was doing my beam routine in 2013 and 2014, uh, I believe I could have actually went to the Olympics with this routine and win myself a gold medal because my coach really pushed me to do this routine to perfection and she put all these new elements that not everybody would she put all these new elements that not everybody would have done at that age and um, I was really happy with it but obviously I wasn't because I did fell off on the exact thing that my coach looked forward on me doing and making it to perfection um, but one thing was I had this problem where I couldn't stop after one flip 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 so I used to have this problem where I couldn't stop after like one two or three flips I kept going into it and I couldn't stop and imagine down a beam like your beam would finish so where would you flip off of, of course you could like easily just injure yourself by doing it so my coach well she would le learn me to, taught me to do this element um, she was always there next to me holding me making sure I wasn't gonna uh, fall off or injure myself or go into another uh, flip so I've done that with her for probably around six months I'm not entirely sure I'm, I don't know how long it took me to learn that element on B but then the competition came and again she kept helping me and everything and I always thought to myself am I gonna do this by myself like when is she gonna let me do it by myself without Matt on the beam without her help and that never happened I actually thought she would allow me to do it at least once before the competition but she didn't she was always there until the last minute meaning when I had to do my rit routine for the competition she just left me she's like okay you're on your own 
and I'm like, am I really doing this by myself? And apparently so. I did it, and of course I fell because I was scared. It was my first time doing it by myself, so I didn't know what to expect. Um, so I did fell, and then the next day I did it again and took that landing. I, I did it perfect, but then I did another element before finishing my routine, which I fell. So again, instead of getting a good a beautiful score, I've got more of a less score. But the thing is, it was still like the biggest score out of the whole competition. So again, I amazed loads of people in those competitions. I was really happy with it. Like beam was my favorite, my favorite um, thing to do because I used to have all of these weird elements that no not many people used to do so I felt like yes I'm like the best <laughs> um, like I said before weight was really a really bad subject to me while I was doing gymnastics no one was happy with my weight ever maybe like the one time the only time someone was happy with my weight was when nobody really cared about it so no one really talked about weight no one told us that we're not allowed to eat certain foods or not as much so as soon as we were told that oh girls be careful what you eat don't eat too much or the coaches even told the parents in front of us oh guys please be careful what you feed your girls uh, the competitions are approaching so we don't want them to like injure themselves because they were too fat so when we heard those words we instantly like mentally we just started feeling like we weren't allowed to eat anything so we all just started eating more than we usually did like before I would eat like a bird and obviously I would be skinny and nice and pretty but as soon as I was told that, I started eating like a pig and obviously my weight just changed. So it was, it was all mentally because if I feel that if they, if they didn't tell us anything about our weight or how much we should eat, we all could have been happy and not have um, a, and not have like anything bad happening to us when it came to weight. Thank you for listening to my gymnast story. Uh, right now I kind of feel a real relief for doing it because for me it's so hard to talk about it. Even if it doesn't show right now on camera, it is deep down so hard for me to talk about it because there's so much happening behind the scenes that nobody else knows. But I'm not going to share that because it is too painful for me. I hope that there are other gymnasts that did the opposite of what I've done or the way I used to think. I hope they are a lot healthier, like mentally, because if they have the right mindset to do something, they will go somewhere, they will easily just go to the Olympics but if they had the mindset of the way I had it please change it now because you will just become what I am right now isn't that bad like who I am right now because I've learned to find a new passion which is filming and making producing something so yeah, if you really want to be an athlete and go to the Olympics for gymnastics, please change your mindset and think happy thoughts. If someone wants to bring you down, let them think that they are doing it, but don't go home and think all these negative thoughts that you were given. Try to be positive and help yourself. Thank you.